Tech Team Weekly. This show may contain mature language and themes. Bonjour, willkommen, and I can't think of any other language. Bien bien the case of mine. For, for some reason, I'm thinking Klingon, which is <laughs> nook ne, but uh, which is li literally what do you want, which is not really the, uh, the friendly intro I wanted for the podcast. But hello, everybody. Welcome to Tech Team Weekly, and another episode from uh, the, the Bridge of a Klingon Bird of Prey, apparently. Um, <laughs> welcome to this week's podcast. Uh, we're very excited to be talking to you as per usual. We've got a big topic to talk about today, the hot topic of what does it mean to have a four-day working week. There's some really interesting uh, information that's come out of some experiments at Atlassian recently. And we'll have all the usual segments as well. We'll have all of our regular updates. We've got some news bites at the end. And uh, yeah, um, I should probably introduce my hosts who are here with me today. I've got Sanj, as usual. Hi, Sanj, how are you doing? Hello, hey, Neil. Hey, everyone. Uh, what's your best uh, non-English hello that you can offer us? Um, I guess I could do um, Cantonese, Leho, or Mandarin, Ni Hao. Pretty good, pretty good. Gwen, hello. Hello. Uh, Anion Hasio. Oh, uh, which is Korean. Impressive. Uh, so if you watched Adventure Time, uh, Lady <laughs> Rainicorn spoke Korean. Um, but yeah. <laughs> There we go. We go fully multicultural this week. Mm -hmm. um, let's go straight into um, the stand-up. The stand-up. Uh, in my stand-up update, it's literally moments now before I, I start my uh, job. So I'm, you know, um, happy, excited, anxious, nervous, you know, everything, the whole range of emotions. Um, but... I've had a super hectic morning today, like, because I, I sold some stuff on eBay. So I was, I just had to like print out, you know, in my final moment of freedom, I wanted to print out the labels, ship everything off. And then my, my printers run out of ink. So I ordered on prime, but I don't want to wait until tonight when they deliver it, you know, it's awesome. Same day, but luckily in, in like a win for like bricks and mortar stores, there's a Curry's right behind me in the retail park. So <laughs> I literally drove there at like, you know, 9 AM. Um, awesome experience. They had the thing. I bought it. Um, they even gave me like a discount because the price was kind of wrong on the thing. Um, just, just really great. Um, and yeah, so super busy, but productive morning already. I've printed out all the labels. I've mailed everything off. Uh, hopefully that's all good. Um, I caught up with Dowie again, uh, which was awesome. Um, he's always, he's, he's always tells me, please don't say anything about me. <laughs> He always gets so like shy and nervous, but yeah, that was awesome. I love him. You know, he's listening. So he's a fan of the show now. Like he, he went back and he binged every episode we've done. So I know he's going to be listening or watching. Um, so hello, Dowie. It was really great catching up with him because he's like a senior engineering man manager and, you know, I'm not an expert in the management space. So it was really nice to understand those nuances of, you know, what that kind of role entails and stuff. Um, I, I, I went over to my buddy Leon's uh, house for dinner. Uh, that was really, really awesome. Um, uh, I love him. I love his wife. Uh, I love their puppy. They've got like a, well, she's like seven now. I love dogs. So it was like really great to like uh, catch up with him and play with their dog. And he started, um, an awesome business. So he does like, um, he sharpens blades, anything with like an edge, like, you know, your kitchen things, your, your axes, your garden things, whatever. He sharpens them. He repairs them. He makes them and he's really awesome. Um, so check it out. Uh, it's Hornminster Edge Services. Um, yeah, if you say TTW and Sanj sent you, maybe, maybe you'll get a discount. And we'll give away a free katana to our 100th <laughs> listener this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds like an awesome giveaway. Let's do it. <laughs> That's cool. It sounds like a really lovely week. Uh, so my week was really nice. I went on holiday. So uh, I went near Pitlochry in Scotland and it was just so incredible. I saw like quite a few red squirrels. The autumn colours were amazing and there's like loads of conifers. So it was it was like what I imagine New England would be like. It was beautiful. I fed deer. I went to Stirling Ooh. Castle, just had the best time. Um, I'm going to a peer conference today online, of course. Um, it's the Quali Quality Acceleration Peer Conference, um, which I'm really excited about. It's with a bunch of Dutch people and I absolutely adore Dutch people. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to see my Dutch friends again, because it's been a while since the last one we did, um, back to work this week. Um, I'm kicking off sprints for a squad and like just loads of work with the people team outside of that. Um, outside of work, I'm running a retro for agile on the beach for when the conference was on. Um, so it was really exciting. Um, Mike, uh, he basically started it, I think, um, 
he asked me yesterday if I could run it and I'm like, yay, that's so exciting because it's like the most mega experienced agile humans basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I'll see. It'll be good to get feedback on the retro as well so I can improve for the future. And yeah, it's, uh, it's test bash this week, um, which I'm hosting. I'm so excited. It's going to be tops, but, uh, yeah, I won't steal any more of the yeah. thunder from Neil for that. So yeah. Uh, Go on, Neil. Cool. Yeah, I am speaking at Test Bash this week. Um, I really like what they do with the online experience. So to make sure that there's no technical problems, all the speakers record their talks in advance. So I had a little bit of um, problem this week, you know, talking to an, an empty screen in front of me, but it's all done. So I'm going to turn up at the conference on Thursday. I'll do my intro bit. I'll do Q&A at the end, but the middle bit is taken care of. I, there's, there's so, I've got no conference anxieties, the sort that I would normally get if I was speaking at an event. So really looking forward to, to enjoying the day uh, as an attendee as well. Uh, postman wise it's been a busy week gone and a busy week coming uh, i was on the postman live stream on twitch and things on thursday night uh, for a couple of hours which is really good fun uh, it's quite free form you're always like fielding questions from the audience and suggestions so um there's not much planning involved but it went pretty sw uh, smoothly i think uh, we've got a, a qa team off-site this week basically uh, it's, it's off-site but virtual um, we're just getting together to talk about the couple of releases that have gone by uh, we've had a new head of quality come in a couple of months back so he's gonna um help us shape a standard of things to come which is going to be fun i managed to get my hands on a pixel 6 well not my hands my fingers on the keyboard got uh, in the queue for a pixel 6 i have pre-ordered one and i'm waiting it's for its delivery uh, it hits store shelves this thursday whether ee are going to get it to me by thursday or after thursday i'm not sure but looking forward to it uh, and i also finally got the prompt to upgrade to windows 11 and i took the plunge uh, a couple of days ago nothing majorly offensive has happened yet there's a few things as usual like if you want to switch the uh, start button back to the bottom left there's a setting for it it's really straightforward um nothing too horribly wrong has happened so uh yeah um there's other stuff going on in the background uh, that i would class as something big uh but i not only can i not talk about it on air i can't talk to sandra or gwen about it yet either so just there's a there's a big thing happening oh. um, stay tuned it may be a few weeks before you hear what that is but uh yeah exciting interesting mm. can't wait Social engineering. In social engineering, Lee Hawkins says on the topic of monitoring, maybe it's now a reasonable and sadly increasingly necessary question to ask a potential employer during an interview, whether they engage in this sort of nonsense. That's actually a great shout. I didn't even consider that, you know, um, definitely something to ask about, right? Or, or to what extent they do these sorts of things, right? Yeah, usually the first you hear about it is, you know, you get your company's IT security policy put in front of you, but that tends mm. to be a day one thing rather than a prior to sign up thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kristen, uh, said, uh, reg um, re monitoring the vast majority of monitoring that happens in the workplaces to protect the company. If you don't want it read, don't do it in the work computer. Um, he also had some interesting points. I think I like Kristen. I think, I, I think a lot like him, you know, s slightly, maybe potentially un PC, you know, potentially unwoke a little bit, but you know, he, he says, um, having children myself, uh, I don't, uh, agree regarding the monitoring and making sure children know everything that we're doing. I mean, he has, you know, pretty reasonable opinions. I think he's stating being kind of a bit of a de devil's advocate here. I think it is an issue and it's not clear cut, but for me, uh, healthy monitoring is good. The issue comes when it's being done without the permission or notice as a child, as a minor, it's not them that should be notified. The opinion that he has, um, I think it's, I think it's valid. Uh, Simon, Simon Pryor says the whole thing with gaggle is scary. Education is key. I used to give schools talks on internet safety and you could see the change in behavior based on what they learned. Monitoring and blocking seems the wrong approach to me. Uh, another I interesting perspective there. Um, and, and also Dowie gave me some feedback in person. He said, uh, cause obviously he's binged our entire series now. He said, you know, he likes the shorter, tighter, um, format. He goes approaching an hour is too long. He wants it like half an hour. So we'll try podcast driven development so uh youtube so we've hit 70 subscribers we celebrated with a few nice gifts when we hit 69 so that was exciting <laughs> we hit we hit um, 69 twice because we went back down to 68 briefly for some reason so we had we had two of those little bumps it was nice we did we did so we got to celebrate twice which is always a good thing um so linkedin we're at 180 followers twitter 196 uh We've uh, still got our five Patreons, which is great. And uh, Anchor, we've got 367 plays, which is up 13%. Mm -hmm. So that's still climbing up. Um, and yeah, so that's all good. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Horrible thing came out of How face. How are you there. feeling? 
Uh, generally a bit better. I've still got this, this tickly cough that, that hits me at night. And actually, my son's got it as well. Um, but it's it's not COVID. But it's just it's just like a bit of just chest infection. I think we're both suffering with. But uh, we're all, we're doing all right. Good. But, um, and sorry, we didn't even bother to ask you, uh, Gwen. Hope you had a nice holiday and you're refreshed. It was it was the fucking best. I felt mm. so relaxed. I miss my bathroom a lot though. Oh, yeah. um, not having a bee day mm. is oh, terrible. Oh, you have a day? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I got one awesome. of the. Uh, yeah, it's it's like amazing, but you really miss it when you leave the mm. house. You're just like, this is disgusting. Why am I mashing toilet <laughs> paper onto my ass? It's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't we don't have a, none of our bathrooms none of our three bathrooms are big enough one but where um there is a petition going on in the house to get what's called a bum gun which mm -hmm. is i think it's just like a, almost mm -hmm. like a like a shower head adapter mm -hmm. type thing that goes onto the toilet mm -hmm. i don't understand how the plumbing works there literally uh, you know the, the lady plumbing or the uh, house plumbing but um there's there's <laughs> some there's a lot of innovation happening in the whole bum space you know and we yeah. need to get on the bandwagon there's a gap in the market <laughs> <laughs> so mine's like a toilet with the like sprayer it, like inside the toilet and yeah highly recommend do you have one I, I don't but i want to get one i hear a lot of good buzz around them <laughs> <laughs> a vibrating one that's that's <laughs> um, okay, so when on. we come to work out the length of the episode let's let's ignore the last I, few minutes I, I, we've got literally 10 <laughs> minutes for the epic go <laughs> if this stays in we have yeah, <laughs> yeah okay This week's epic. This week's main story comes from Atlassian, who've published an extremely insightful blog post into one of their team's experiments with a four day working week. The concept has been a popular talking point in the past year. It's even been mentioned on this podcast once or twice. But there's been little empirical evidence of the impact that an arrangement would have on team productivity and on employee well-being until now. The blog post, which was written by Sarah Goff Dupont, is chock full of qualitative and quantitative information and useful metrics, revealing that key performance indicators rose, as did employee well-being, with energy and confidence both being given a boost by the benefits of a three day weekend. However, it wasn't entirely a rose garden. Some of the team reported anxieties with trying to avoid even minute interruptions on their four day working days and the push to complete their team's work on a Thursday afternoon. But as the experiment continued, the team found that they were increasingly able to keep to a standard eight hour working day, even more than when they were working a five day week. It's a great blog post that I really recommend reading. And I love the takeaway about Parkinson's law. We've always said that work expands to fit the time available, but actually it seems if you take some of that time away, the work also still seems to get done. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting topic, guys. Um, I think mm. from from an employer and a personal perspective, anyone given the chance to do a four day week is going to say, yeah. yeah. But I guess it's harder to see the the employer benefit. They, they may say, uh, you know, they, they want people working the full five allocated days. Mm. I've had uh, a few people that I manage work four day weeks and um, it depends on where you are. A couple of years ago, uh, one of the chaps I managed, he went down to a four day week and there was a lot of people like, being like, oh, it's like day off, blah, 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 like being kind of bitchy about it because he was a male without children and stuff like that. But it feels like it's changed quite a bit. Um, mm. One of the people I manage now does a four day week and no one cares. Mm. They're just mm. like, oh, sorry, I probably shouldn't say their name, <laughs> but yeah, they don't work today. So it's fine. Um, mm. And yeah, and it really works for them. It's great. Yeah, I, I just, just to kind of to reiterate that, um, um, I'll talk about this from a postman perspective. At postman, we have flexible working hours. So basically you work the hours you want. Again, you know, there's a, a set number of hours that you should try to work, but when you do them, it's, it's entirely up to you, particularly with teams being around the world. Uh, but I've recently um, made a switch to a, a four and a half day working week. So I have a half day off each week. Um, and the reason is that half day, you know, technically I could, I could have done this exact same pattern of hours, but with the half day being my allocated time off, I can switch off and go, you know, I'm not going to, no one's expecting me to look around emails right now. <laughs> I can I could tune out. I could go and spend some time with the family, uh, and that to me was a, a big boost compared to just saying, um, you know, just just work the hours you want because you feel like yeah, but I work all the hours, please. 
Um, I really, I really like what they tried here because, you know, I've heard of people, I've, I've known people working four day work weeks, um, but either they'll, either that situation is sort of like they're doing two extra hours every day to make up for, you know, the fifth day, or they're just doing the regular four days and only being paid for the four days. This is the first time I've heard of anyone trying that, you know, trying to squeeze all the work into four, eight hour work days, you know. I remember when I first started in like uh, software testing and we used to have to track our time and for a day we only put down five hours because you were only ever going to mm -hmm. work five mm -hmm. hours properly in a day mm -hmm. like the rest of the time you're not like working fully on tickets you're not coding you're not doing stuff mm -hmm. and yeah like i don't know i guess we could be more useful with our time but i do worry how absolutely exhausted you would be <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I think personally, if I did four long days, um, so, so fit in the full 40 hour week into four days, I don't think I would get the benefit of the rest of relaxation that, that a three day uh, weekend would, would normally give you. I, mm. I would be, you know, I would be trying to desperately catch up on sleep and then suddenly it's the, it's Monday again. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I think part of your first question, Neil, was, you know, what's what's the sort of um, selling point to like em, uh, employers, right? You know, why would they even consider doing something like this? And I think mental well-being is being called out. It was called out by, you know, uh, Sarah in, in, her, in her article. And um, I, I think it's a really valid point, right? Especially like right now, people are really suffering in terms of me mental well-being. Not everyone is is doing as great as we are, right? They don't have they don't have co-hosts to talk to every every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Attached to the blog post, there was a YouTube video with uh, interviews with several of the Atlassian team. Uh, I'll link to the YouTube video directly in the show notes as well. And you actually, you could see on their faces that the, the, the team's response to this arrangement. Um, some of them described their, their weekends as being relaxing and rejuvenating. They weren't just rushing to fit everything they wanted to do in the weekend because they had that extra time. And they also said that actually during the working week, because there was those condensed four days with you know, obviously deadlines within that, it gave them more focus because they were aware of the, the slightly reduced working time available. So your focus is always on the goal rather than, you know, you get through Monday, Tuesday, you've still got three days left in the week. Mm. You, know, you don't accelerate your work until mid midweek, maybe um, mm. the, the four days. was It was much more. This is the stuff we've got to get done. And we've committed to do it, in, doing it in a reduced time period. So um, it, 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 that's a funny noise I just made. It definitely <laughs> delivered some uh, focus benefits. Three days to actually sort yourself out on the weekend would be amazing mm. because at the moment one day is taken up by like reeling from the week, isn't it? You're like, oh my God, that was hardcore. Okay, yeah. I will sit here. Um, and it's okay for me because I don't have children. Um, I, I remember talking to one of my friends and he was like, you know, you do so much stuff. How do you relax? I'm like, well, one day a month I lay in bed and watch YouTube all day. <laughs> and he's like, I can't do that. I, I, I have children. I'm like, I have no advice. Like, how are you meant to, how do you relax then? Like, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Like, I think it would be useful because the older you get, the less time you have to like, yeah. Yeah, chill out. And time, you need that. time goes faster the older you get as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's scary. Yeah. Talk about it. You know, Two I'm, months till Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> It'll be next week before you know it. But so, you know, one of the really awesome things I like that came out of uh, all of the learnings uh, around uh, the writings um, uh, around the subject is uh, the optimizations they were able to make because, you know, they had less time. So, you know, they picked and chose, they were much more picky about their meetings and like how long things went went on for. And they really micromanaged their time a bit better, you know, and it, it seems to work for them. You know, like there's a lot of fat there that can be trimmed to make us more productive. Totally, totally. Like, I think so many people like book in half an hour for meetings because that's the, like, what it suggests. Mm. Meetings don't need to be half an hour. Like, sometimes they can be 15 minutes and be really effective. And it's like, it's really important to try and push them down as well. Um, the other day, like, well, last week there was someone didn't have time for a like half an hour meeting. And so they were like, oh, can it be 15 minutes? And it was a really important meeting and it had to be like, right, we need to get the point across as quickly as possible and leave time. Like, mm -hmm. and it means that you're so much more efficient. Pushing things down is really useful. Like they also have Google Meet has that thing where it's like the, what are they called? Like 25, 50 minute meetings and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. where you can actually get a break between meetings yeah. instead of like panicking and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I've, cert- I've certainly worked for companies where people are just, they've got their calendars open, they're trying to find, like, it's like a jigsaw, to like, oh, here's a 30 minute slot, I could just, just sneak into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But actually, at, at Money Supermarket, we had a, a new leader come in who was very, very hot on that. Like, any, any meeting that should be 30 minutes, or that you would normally book a 30 minute slot for, make it 20 or 25 to, to save the sanity of those who are going straight into another meeting, meeting straight after it. Mm. Uh, yeah. but we had a we had a really good comment on on about this uh, on Twitter from Simon Pryor who said um, that such a four day working week arrangement where you can press your hours, it might not work in companies with a heavy meeting culture because you'll just end up with four days with even more meetings than usual. And uh, yeah, I, I think you need to be aware of of what the blockers are to your productivity, and uh, meetings are a huge one of those. Mm. Yeah, I, I sorry on a slight tangent. I really I really like Atlassian as a company, and this makes me like them even more. Um, like I, they seem to be doing really awesome stuff. You know, trying out new things. They seem to be doing. Uh, there's a lot of great content they're putting out there in terms of you know engineering culture and you know um, pushing the bleeding edge of things. So yeah, it's really great. It's really great, and I really like um, everything that Sarah's been running around it, about it. She's written quite a, a lot of uh, articles around this experiment, experiment that they've done, and. Um, she was nice enough to reach out to me uh, or to reply to me uh, rather on Twitter. And she, she wanted to just make it clear that this is a bit of an experiment. It kind of, they tried it over the summer on this one team and they've taken those learnings and uh, it's all optional and they're trying it out in various different forms in different areas of the company. But I think mental well-being is a big push for them. So even though other teams, this type of thing may not work for they said they're doing sort of like you know um, a day off a month uh, you know like you said or uh, working half days on a friday uh, anything to sort of uh, that can help a team do better and feel better yeah i think the fact that they tried it um is a really uh, great thing um mm. some of the team were saying in, in this youtube video that um they're obviously very keen to try it as an experiment but they were worried about breaking conventions that were in place like people don't work four day weeks and i think it's really important that you can have a company culture that allows you to try things and particularly when you are um they've not just done it for a laugh and come back and say well that was fun mm-hmm. uh, they have sat down and worked out because they, they tracked for like three or four weeks before the experiment started they started measuring these metrics like how happy are you how busy are you how many days in a week are you working more than eight hours so they had that data leading into the experiment and then they saw how it changed as the experiment went on and i think um they've gone about this in a, a really professional way mm-hmm. that will even if they're not considering a switch for you know company-wide they have put information out there that's going to make uh the job much easier for anyone who wants to produce metrics as to this is why it might work for us and this is why we as a company might also like to try this i need to have a proper look at the metrics um i've not had a proper look yet but atlassian do publish good stuff around how to measure teams as well mm. um i think it's really important to measure the happiness of teams like especially like really quick fire kind of things where it where you can actually measure over time and track over mm-hmm. time um yeah yeah absolutely so, so here's an interesting thing that I don't think I've ever told anybody. Um, I obviously moved, made the move to Manchester a few years ago um, when I was single back in the day, the weird day. Again, it seems like a long time ago now when I was single and free. Um, <laughs> I nearly made the move to Australia uh, to, wow. to work for Atlassian's team in Sydney. I, I didn't I didn't get that far in the because it, it wouldn't involve things like visa applications. But um, like, yeah, I've got a lot of time for Atlassian. Um, I, I know a lot of their products um, because they're so widely used, particularly things like Jira, mm. um, get a lot of uh, shit sometimes yeah. but um they're also they're, they're, they're massive players and, and they are uh they're very good at what they do yeah damn man sydney now, now that would have been a cool cool move do you wish you were in sydney right now i wouldn't say <laughs> i wouldn't change what i've got now for anything okay because <laughs> i've been a bit watches. salty i've been a bit salty being in the uk over the pandemic when like speaking to my mm. sister and she's just like yeah yeah like everything's quite normal here and mm. i'm just like god damn it mm. <laughs> Yeah, um, they're just. I don't know Sydney that well. Um, last time I went to Sydney was before there was uh, GPS on your phone. And Sydney <laughs> is the easiest place to get lost in. Mm-hmm. Like it is so easy to get lost, and I was just lost all the time. Honestly, I don't. I don't think that the, the geographical change was the thing that, that frightened me off. I, I am not a person for big, scary things that kill you, uh, and I know Australia <laughs> has more than more of those than most. You find oh, yeah. spiders and stuff. Yeah, uh, I think that sort of thing would petrify me, but. Uh, you get used to it it's fine <laughs> every all those every, any normal regular thing in any other country just like a little insect or something yeah. a bug in australia I, it's just it's out to murder you basically i'm picturing that animation of the dog with the room on fire saying this is fine except the fire is replaced with spiders and it's gwen going it's fine <laughs> one of my favorite things about the english is their fear of wasps 
Like wasps can't really hurt you. Yeah. But like whenever a wasp goes near an English person, they just freak out. It's amazing. And I'm just yeah. like, it's just sit still. It won't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. It's one of the things my wife discovered about me in, in our earliest days of dating was like the first time she saw me see a wasp. And basically anytime I see a wasp, I have to know where the wasp is and where my nearest exit is. So I would stand for <laughs> like facing the wasp, but knowing I had an exit behind me so I could get out if it made some lunge at me. Did you? Anyway. <laughs> Did you did you mentally prepare to use your wife as a, as a shield in case the wasp wasp got too close? I think I think I would have done that. I probably probably wouldn't you wouldn't use my child yet, um, just because there there is there is some uh, history of allergy in my family, so I wouldn't want to want to use him as a battery as, as a shield. But uh, okay. yeah, but, but your wife knew wasp what was, she was getting herself out. into when she got into this. <laughs> well, to to an extent, yeah. <laughs> um, so would would you both work a four day week? Would I? Absolutely, yeah. I don't even intend to work that much. Just kidding. If my manager's listening. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Neil? I think I, I think I would like to if I knew that my entire team was doing it. I, so I, I've recently started or, or agreed a four and a half working, what, four and a half day working week. Uh, I stepped away from the chance of doing a four day because I didn't like the idea of only having 80% as much time as the rest of the team. I, I felt like I would be I'd be missing important things. Uh, I would be slipping behind the times. As a team arrangement, uh, I definitely could see that being uh, a big thing for the future. Like I, I would take a salary cut to to do. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I'd take a twenty percent cut, but you know, to get to get some time back, possibly. Yeah. So what's been really useful is we have um, we have a few part time people at work. Um, I mentioned one of four, one who was a four day, but we have some working mothers who are three days. Um, and so we had to optimize so we could include them in things. So um, so we set up channels so they don't have to go through like all of engineering chat. We just have engineering announcements for anything that people need to know and stuff like that. And so optimizing so people can actually work these hours instead of having them feeling like they're missing out is really important in encouraging people to take like a four day week or something, mm -hmm. I think. But it. Like it wasn't instant. Like Slack was really stressful for them for a while. Like you need to make the mistakes to be able to optimize. I think. I, I feel like conceptually, this talk around a four day work week is like a sign of things being in the right place as opposed to the wrong place. Cause I think it's kind of partnered up with, you know, uh, that mentality of work is a place you go as opposed to work as a thing you do, you know, people who are very keen to ha just have bodies sitting in this, in a seat in an office that they want to pay rent for, as opposed to just trusting that people can do their work, you know, why should people have core hours necessarily or work, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, if they can be as productive, you know, or be better employees, um, working slightly differently. Yeah. There's, there's certainly environmental benefits to, to less people traveling and that sort of thing as well. And particularly with, fuel crises and whatever which thankfully seems to be dropping off now but so the yeah. general climate concerns yeah. um you know if you can get the work done and, and you can only put x amount of uh, carbon out into the world yeah it's got to be a good thing news bites news bites okay the uk has a 10-year ai investment plan this is something that uh, i've been wanting to talk about for a little while i think this is pretty cool it's pretty uh, exciting so they're actually doing something to make this happen they have a plan and they've set up a government office for ai and it and i've read it all and it all sounds sensible and reasonable and you know um <laughs> So I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, it aims to position uh, the UK as a global leader and the governance of AI technologies includes plans for white paper and AI regulation uh, from code. The UK has a, has a tremendous history uh, around this from code breaker Alan Turing to London based uh, powerhouse uh, DeepMind. The UK is one of the top countries in the world for private venture capital investment into AI and home to a third of Europe's total AI companies. I think this is big news. I think AI is, you know, going to be a huge part of the future and i think it's really important that we're positioning ourselves here as uh, a sort of leader in that space i think this is an, an exciting one and it actually makes sense when you read it Sanj. absolutely it's it it all made sense it was like a well thought out well put together plan there was they've involved uh, like dozens of the right people people in, in throughout industries and everyone's engaged and making this happen that seems crazy <laughs> so <laughs> I went and saw a talk by um, a philosopher I really like, A.C. Grayling, uh, the other week. Well, it was an online talk, and uh, he was talking about AI, 
and he was talking about AI. Um, so when your insurance company uh, calculates the risk of something that uses AI, and it was just like, oh, I'm seeing a philosopher talk about something mm -hmm. that I know more about than him, and this is really disappointing. <laughs> like, because I'm like, I like you for your philosophy, mm -hmm. like, but you're talking about tech and you don't really get it now. So I'm really glad that they are talking sense yeah. because, yeah, I always feel like with AI, people think that they know what they're talking about, but they don't. And I mean, I don't know that much what I'm talking about with AI, but like, I know more than some other people apparently. Yeah, the, the government goes through very small spurts of this sensible thinking. I think the last thing on this scale was probably um, when was it David Cameron who announced uh, the, the Silicon Roundabout initiative and everything mm, that's going on around mm, sort of Old Street in London and yeah. pushing that as, as, you know, noises that UK makes in tech. And that was like late 2000s. So uh, yeah. it's long, over, long overdue for some sensible uh, policy on this sort of thing. Definitely. I think another great sensible move by the government would be to maybe sponsor our show, you know, if you want to, you want to sponsor us. Oh God! Can you, can you imagine if we were a government mouthpiece? <laughs> that would be brilliant. Our, our glorious leader Boris Johnson. Let's talk about what he's done this week. He's still in charge, right? I don't. I don't watch the news. Um, speaking of glorious leaders, it takes takes me nicely on to Donald Trump being making noises in the news again. Uh, Donald Trump has declared his intention to create and launch his own social media platform. Having previously been suspended from both Facebook and Twitter, he's now announced a, a site called Truth Social, which he claims will stand up to big tech, mm -hmm. even though I think he's just taken his ball and going home. Um, at the moment, it's just a landing page where you can register for more information, but the platform will allegedly launch to a few choice users uh, on iOS in the coming weeks before a global rollout early in 2022. Now, I've made my mistakes in, in belittling Trump before, and he obviously has a, a, a large user base. Mm. He wouldn't become president if he didn't. Um, I would question his ability to, to produce a fully functional social network from scratch <laughs> in three weeks. Uh, but I, I assume he's, he maybe has been thinking about this for a while. He, he was kicked off Twitter um, at the same time as he lost the presidency. So um, this has probably been bubbling under for a while. But um, I said to you on, on Slack earlier in the week, I, I'm a, a true believer in know your enemy. So I have I have signed up with a uh, anonymous email address uh, that I can block when I don't want to hear about it anymore, um, just to see if I can get access, uh, at least to try and break the damn thing. Um, I'm sure plenty of people would, do, would be trying to do that. But um, What was the last social network that was like a total failure that was really hilarious? The one with, that was a right-wing one? Do you remember the name of it? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what the last one was called. Was it like six letters? It was like had the same name as some other tool that we use, like yeah, yeah, pretty often. I and think, and it got like hacked instantly. You know, yeah, it was really funny. But I hope that his turns out like that because that was a <laughs> quite a bit of nice entertainment, wasn't it? Well, I mean, he he has yeah, no, there, was, there was there was par parlay. There was one. Oh, parlay, that's the yes! one. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think this is the, there is a danger. I mean, I mean, if if, if Donald Trump is in, in, in control of what is is and isn't allowed to be published, I mean, it comes down to the whole freedom of speech versus should you really be saying that kind of thing again. Mm -hmm. I am sure it will be a cesspit before too long. It's certainly not where I want to reside. Um, but it's the, always interesting to see what's going on. The big problem is, as you say, he has a lot of support. He came out of nowhere. Every everyone thought he was a joke. The mainstream, anyway, you know, and us. I'm going to make a presumption we're all pretty much lefties here. You know, we thought, you know, no chance. And then, you know, those were just the worst four years of our, of our lives, right? Yeah. What are yeah, you, uh, quick, quick, quick show of hands here for let's put our, our next on the line. Um, he has not yet announced whether he's going to run again for 2024. He has previously said he might give it a go. Um, mm. Your predictions on whether he will run and whether he will win. Oh, he can't fucking win. <laughs> Um, like, I, like, I don't want that. It was horrible. There's it was a... absolutely horrible. So yeah. it made the US a lot less appealing to go to. So there mm. were conferences and it's like, well, should we be going to the US? Like, oh, it was so sad. Yeah, and it, 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 it has global ramifications, right? And it's changed mm -hmm. the, the discourse, pol political discourse and society in the US um, for the worse, in my opinion. It allowed of, of, of whatever you think of Biden or, or whoever would have come in, in instead of him. Um, a lot of his time is being spent undoing stuff that Trump did, and you know, getting mm -hmm. himself back into climate uh, agreements and things. It, it's just, mm. uh, I, I think, I think the only way he won't win is if he doesn't run. Um, and I don't think you'll stop him from running. Uh, but no, hey, well, hey, 
Hey, listen, uh, to uh, hopefully end this on a happier note, there are a couple of really cool um, documentaries around um, the end of that sort of Trump era uh, around uh, on BBC iPlayer. I just started watching one. One is like around the whole insurrection that happened, you know, and the other is on the in, mm. on his impeachment. They they both seem like pretty good uh, watches, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And now, and if we all had a, if, if we all if we all had a four day working week, we could all all sit down and watch those on, on a Friday. <laughs> Just, just to try and tie things back up. <laughs> the wash up. Awesome. Uh, another pretty sweet, tight little conversation we had there. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, hit us up uh, on our social. You know where we are. Let us know how we did. Uh, what you think uh, about stuff? I guess. <laughs> Wasps or spiders? <laughs> <laughs> All right, please listen. Uh, please subscribe. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Please subscribe. Please like. Please me. consider subscribing. Hello. Is my favorite. <laughs> please <laughs> consider subscribing. Thank you and goodbye. Tech Team Weekly.